Hallelujah. Lord, we lift your name on high. Thank you because you came from heaven to earth. You came to show us the way and tonight we ask you, show us the way again as we have gathered together in your name. Lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Make a word simple enough to everyone that will listen to this to simply comprehend, even to the youngest child. And Father, we thank you for, there will be an entrance of your word today and you will give us understanding. And your word will be simple enough that we will all understand and comprehend in the name of Jesus and everybody everywhere can I hear you say amen if you're on the comment section on the Facebook live just type in amen and amen and amen it's good to come again into your household good to come into your living room good to come into your very 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 heart not us but the Spirit of God and uh, listen you're welcome if today is your first time that you're joining this live broadcast thank you for joining this broadcast you are invited or you came from last Sunday because some people joined us last Sunday for the first time and uh, you liked the Facebook page and alerted you and that's it you're live with us on this Bible study and what do we do in the Bible study we study the Bible we try to study and look at the Word of God and clearly look at what God is saying see the application of what God has said and see what God is saying today one of the things we like to say tonight is you know Jesus said somewhere when he was talking about the days we're in now he said it's thousands of years ago that when the last days come there are going to be false Christ false prophets false teachings you know and there are also going to be a lot of tribulations happening earthquakes pestilences diseases volcanoes pandemics it's as such as the world has never seen before and that's exactly what's happening right now when you look at the world and everything happening now so it's important for us to look at the scriptures and see because what God is saying now is what God has said before. You see, God will never contradict himself. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God has said is what God is saying now and what God will say. God has highly exalted his word even above his name. So whatever God says, as the scriptures reveal that heaven and earth will pass away this heaven and this earth we live in currently will pass away will one day be destroyed will one day go a new heavens and a new earth is coming it says heaven and earth will pass away but not one tittle not one jot of my word you know a tittle is just a tiny jot like a little as small as an you know a dot like a full stop when you're writing or an apostrophe when you're writing a sentence in English he says not even that will pass away unfulfilled every single thing God has said so that's why we're looking tonight and we will give this a title yes it's a case study we're looking at new wine and new wine schemes It's a case study of Noah it's past part two but please title this dare to be different New wine in new wine schemes, case study of Noah, dare to be different or choose to be different. What do we mean? We started last week and we looked in depth as a man called Noah. But let's see the link between what we're doing tonight and um, Noah. Jesus makes a statement in Matthew chapter 24 from verse 37. 
and also he makes the same statement in the Luke chapter 17 from verse 26 same statement so let's go to the Luke account and let us link up what Jesus said to why we're looking at Noah in Luke chapter 17 verse 26 the Bible declares and I read it says in verse 26 and as it was in the days of Noah so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man they ate they drank the married wives they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all the days of Noah just as it was then is what we're experiencing now what happened in the days of Noah it was a new thing that had never happened in the human um, race back then we see this story in Genesis chapter 6 we started from last week when we looked at it the wickedness of mankind was so great the Bible records that evil was continually continuously in the heart of mankind men and women destroying themselves evil the Bible records the whole earth was corrupt and God who is the source of all life and intelligence the one who created mankind God was angry and God decided that he was going to press the reset button that's what I you know that's just in my own uh, <laughs> little way of putting it God decides to press a reset button and says, you know I'm gonna wipe off the whole earth and start all over again it's just like a computer you know I had an experience recently the computer the laptop I use and especially we use for this live broadcast suddenly crashed last Sunday and we took it for repairs shout out to you Mr. Bams Ayobami sorry Mr. Bams is I, <laughs> I Mr. Ayobami Adeni thank you very much I'm recommending him if your laptop or anything crashes that's the man but you've got to settle him <laughs> he will fix it uh, you know we found out the laptop the hard drive I hope I'm using the right computer word the hard drive was damaged which meant we have to try to see what we can retrieve but that hard drive is gone so we need a new hard drive and that is what he's trying to fix and I understand it's going to take uh, some certain days to try and get the hard drive but basically what we need right now is a new laptop a brand new laptop now the hard drive was damaged so a new hard drive something has to be reset something has to be renewed something had to be kind of completely redone all over again so God decides he was going to wipe off the whole earth and start all over again with Noah and we saw last week we try and look at the man Noah himself and in Genesis chapter 6 let's read this yeah, that's where we're starting today for this case study dare to be different or choose to be different so who was Noah and what was different about Noah? So let's see. The Bible records in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. I am reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. So come with me to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. Genesis is in the Old Testament, the very first book in the Bible. So the Bible says here, and I'm reading from Genesis chapter 6, and uh, let's read from, okay, let's read from verse 1. When men began to multiply on the face of the land, daughters and daughters was born to them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men and were attractive, and they took their wives and 
as they chose and they took as their wives as they chose then the lord said that my spirit shall not abide in man forever for his flesh his days shall be 120 years the nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of god came into the daughters of men they brought children to them these were the mighty men who of all the men of renown the lord saw the wickedness now we're in verse number five the lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention knew that of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually the lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart so the lord said i will blot out man whom i have created on, from the face of the land man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens for i am sorry that i've made them but verse 8 noah found favor in the eyes of god one translation says but noah found grace in the eyes of god we looked at noah what was different about noah that he found grace in the eyes of god now let me remind us of a scripture we studied last week it is in the book of titus chapter 2 titus is in the new testament and verse 11 titus chapter 2 and verse number 11. remember it's a bible study so if you can write the scriptures down and study along now let's understand something about grace remember genesis 6 8 says noah found grace in the eyes of god noah found grace in the eyes of god okay titus chapter 2 verse 11 tells us something about the grace of god so that we will understand that what noah found was actually something every other person could have found listen just just come along titus chapter 2 verse 11 says for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men the grace of god what does it do it brings salvation but it's not a partial grace it actually is available to all mankind but only one person found it in genesis chapter 6. why was this why let's dig into the scriptures carefully but let's read on that titus chapter 2 verse 11. now verse 12 says the grace of god remember the grace of god brings salvation and is available to all now what does the grace of god do verse 12 genesis chapter i'm mean, sorry titus chapter 2 says teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ the grace of God brings salvation. So when the grace of God is available, salvation comes with the grace of God. But the grace is not partial. It is available to all. And the grace of God teaches us, instructs us that, hey, we must live a godly life. We should deny ungodliness. We should deny worldly loss, evil, wickedness. We should live soberly. We should live righteously. So it's not a case of man not knowing the difference between good and evil. But mankind chose to do evil. And that is what gets God angry. Look at it this way. It's like you created a computer. And of course, you've programmed the computer, you've given the computer the software, 
and the computer is meant to do what you you know created it and manufactured it to do and then all of a sudden the computer begins to not do everything you give you type into the computer and it's something else that's coming out you're going to be <laughs> mad at that computer you probably want to fix it and that's exactly what god did here and that's just an analogy so that grace was available but only one man found it noah how did noah find this grace or why did noah find this grace we have a clue let's go back to that genesis chapter 6. so come with me again to genesis chapter 6. genesis chapter 6 so flip your bible and go to genesis chapter 6. Yes, Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6. Are you there? All right, Genesis chapter 6. Remember, the Bible says in verse 8, But Noah found favor or grace in the eyes of God. Okay, so let's look at Noah. Dare to be different. Choose to be different. The Bible says here, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah was different in his generation. He chose to be different. Noah was outstanding. You know, one of the things I try to teach my sons is something I found in the Bible that talks about do not follow a multitude to do evil. You know, you see everybody doing, choosing to do evil, everybody choosing to do what's bad, what's not right. Always make sure you choose because you always have a choice. Listen, I hear people always say things like, Oh, I did it because I didn't have a choice. The fact that you did it because you didn't have a choice is actually a sign you had a choice not to do it. You don't need to bow to pressure from everyone. Oh, everybody is doing it. You choose not to. Choose to be different. Of course, the world is going to hate you because everybody is heading north and then you decide to go south. You know, that scripture that you shouldn't follow a multitude to do evil. And if you choose not to follow the multitude, you will always stand out. And I tell you something, the meaning of outstanding means you are standing out. And when you are outstanding, it means you are standing out because you are doing something better, something good, something unusually good. The meaning of excellent is unusually good. So you decide to excel. You go beyond what everybody is choosing to do. So Noah, the Bible says, he was blameless in his generation. Compared to everybody else, Noah chose not to do what everybody was doing. He found grace in the eyes of God. He found grace. Remember Titus 2.11? Grace of God brings salvation. Grace of God appears to all, no partiality. So this guy, Noah, chose to walk with God. The Bible says, and Noah walked with God. He was blameless. He stood out. We're looking tonight as dare to be different. And what we want to look at, do you know you can be the Noah today? Last week we looked at what his name was. We looked at his birth. We saw how his father I literally spoke into his life when he was born and called his name Noah. He gave him a name. And remember from last week, some of the things we learned, what you call a thing or the name you call your child or the name you call your husband or your wife, that is what the, that thing or that person will become to you. If you keep calling a thing by a negative terminology, that's exactly what that thing will become to you 
eventually become to you. We learned last week, do not call your children what you don't want them to become. Don't call your children what you don't want them to become. Even when they are naughty, we advised, we counsel, you can say, don't be naughty. I don't want you to be this. Don't call them that because they will gradually become that. It's just a principle we saw from the Bible because Noah's father called him Noah. Noah means comfort. Noah means rest. When we, we saw that in Genesis chapter 5, and when he called him that name, he said, this child is going to comfort us because of the ground that God had cursed. Watch what you call your children. Watch what you call your spouse. Watch what you call people. Watch what you call things around you. And guess what? Watch what you call yourself. Don't call yourself stupid. Don't call yourself foolish. Don't call yourself dull. Don't agree with those who don't know how special you are, how great potentials you carry, who don't see you because they didn't create you, but based on their own myopic little judgment of you or experience or encounter with you, they give you a label. You don't have to accept what the world calls you. You don't have to call yourself that negative name. You choose to be different. Can I tell us something? One of the marks we see when you read Mark chapter 16, Matthew chapter 28, you know, Jesus said, one of, this is part of the signs that we follow those who believe, who believe in him, is that they will speak with new tongues. I tell you what a new tongue is. It means that not just you are speaking in the tongue of angel, but you are also speaking in the tongues of men, languages of men. Change your language, change your tongue say pleasant words the bible says that pleasant words in the book of proverbs they are sweet like honey they are health to the bones words are healing words can bring life words can also bring the reverse it can bring death it can bring sadness words that have been spoken to some people are even the reasons why they are battling with depression even up to now because they remember what the parents said they remember what an uncle said they remember what a teacher told them in school what a professor told them in the university what a teacher told them in college listen choose to be different start with your tongue because it's this same tongue that we use to confess salvation you know the bible tells us in romans chapter 8 I believe he says that with the heart man believes but with the tongue confession is made unto salvation I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking or positive confession I'm simply encouraging you tonight listening to this to call yourself what God calls you to tell yourself what the Word of God says about yourself Noah his name was comfort rest that's what the literal meaning of, com of Noah means. And Noah chose to be different. So Genesis chapter 6, he walked with God. Noah walked with God. You can choose to be different. You can dare to be different in your generation, just like Noah. So let's now see what happened. Because next week, I think we have one more week and then we have a question and answer. Uh, the following week after where we will see what actually happened because what happened here was something that had never happened before God just like we're experiencing now a lot of things are happening globally but even if we don't look at the global happening in terms of the pandemic think about how evil and how corrupt this world has become Think about what nations are doing to one another, what one president and one prime minister is trying to outdo the other and the wickedness imposed on nations. You know, stronger nations are trying to be wicked, you know, take advantage, rape with the weaker nations, first world countries, third world countries, you know, a lot of evil. It's just like the days of Noah. There's drinking, there's marrying. You know, there are people out there tonight in the pub who are going to get 
let me use a Liverpool slang, we're going to get bevy, we're going to get stoned tonight. You know, like there's like no man's business. They, they could care less. That's exactly what was happening in the days of Noah. And then God decides he was going to do something very new. We're talking about new wine in new wine skins. What was this new thing God did? Follow me. The Bible says in verse 11, Genesis chapter 6, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all, all, everyone had corrupted their way on the earth. And God spoke to who? Noah. Why did God speak to Noah? Noah found grace in the eyes of God. The grace he found in the eyes of God was actually available to everyone living in Noah's time. Everyone could have found that grace. But Noah found it because Noah chose to be different. Remember, he was blameless. He was different in his generation. If everybody went north, Noah will go south. If everyone went east, Noah will go west. He will always go the way of God. The Bible said he walked with God. You can be that Noah. You can choose to be different. You can dare to be different in your generation because you will see what happened. When you choose to be different, it's not only you that is affected, you affect, yes, your very own, your blood. Let's look at it again. Okay, let's read on. God said to Noah in verse 13, I have determined to make an end of all flesh for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, God now spoke to Noah, right? You will get it clearly, right? I'm going to Genesis chapter 6. Let's read from the New King James Version. You will get exactly what God spoke to Noah here and how that is relevant to us today. Now, God spoke to Noah in verse number 14 genesis chapter 6 verse 14 hear what god said to noah make yourself an ark we paused there last week but we are pausing there this week and we're going deep it's a bible study make yourself an ark of gopher wood make rooms in the ark Cover it inside out, inside and outside with peach. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits. It's height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark. You shall finish it to a cubit from above. Set the door of the ark in, it, uh, in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. <laughs> and then God said, Behold, I, I myself, I am bringing flood waters on the earth. It had never flooded the earth before. There had never been rain on the earth before and floods will come. Never. It was a new thing. It was a new one. Remember, if you've been following the study we did, the teachings on Sundays and then the study from last week, new wine in new wine schemes. A new wine is symbolic of God's blessings or God's judgment. On this side of this study, we're looking at God's judgment. New wine. God was going to do something new he had never done before on the earth. He was going to destroy the old earth. And then he told Noah, because he was going to bring a new wine, God was going to bring a new wine, judgment. He told Noah to do something new. Something no one had ever done before. And he said, Noah, it's like this. I will bring the flood, which is like the judgment. But you, Noah, you build yourself an ark. Noah, build the ark. I will bring the wine. In other words, what's an ark? Do you know what an ark is? An ark is like a boat. Another name for a boat, a vessel. So God said, you build a new vessel. And I will bring the new wine. Can you see the link? And the new one is my wrath, <laughs> my judgment. But you are the one to build 
and bring the new vessel. What did Jesus say? New wine is poured into a new wine skin. This was the new wine skin. Metaphor. An ark never existed before in the history of mankind up till then. God told Noah to build the ark. Now, let us look at the building of this ark. Very interesting. What is this kind of symbolic? How is it applied, applicable to us? The world we live in now is evil. The world we live in now is so wicked. The world we live in now is violence all over the place. There is a pandemic. People are dying. Look, the pandemic. Oh, see, if you see something happening globally, then listen to what Jesus said in the latter end from Matthew 24, Matthew 25, Matthew 26. Jesus spoke about the days and times we live in now. He said it thousands of years ago. One of the signs is of God's judgment of the end time is there will be a global pestilence. Pestilence. Another name for pestilence is a wasting disease. Another name for a wasting disease is a pandemic. And that is what we're experiencing now. Like the days of Noah, Jesus said, so will this end of the world be when they asked him in Luke chapter 27 and uh, uh, Matthew, you know, chap uh, let me get the exact, Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 17. So what is this ark? You and I, you the Noah, who choose to be different. Number one, choose to be different, choose to walk with God. And what do you do in this pandemic? What are we learning? Applicable to us, case study of Noah, you and I are the ones who will build the ark. We will build the new vessel. And listen to the instruction of God about this vessel. God says, listen, you make yourself an ark in verse 14. And God was specific. Now, you know, in this study, the interesting thing about this study is that, you know, let me jump ahead. Do you know when, <laughs> after God sent the flood and everything, I'm jumping ahead, we'll look at it more next week. It was the seventh month that the ark rested when Noah under lockdown was eased. The 17th day of the seventh month, we'll see that in Genesis chapter 8. When the seventh month of the year, July, wow. Anyway, I'll leave that for now. Let's see. You make yourself an ark. But God did not stop there. God said, make the ark of a specific kind of wood. Do you know gopher wood? This was the first time that wood will be mentioned in the Bible. First and only time. It was a gopher wood, a new ark, a new vessel, a new wineskin, made of something new new it had never been used before new wine skin not a reused wine skin a wine skin can always be reused what god is specifying is you bring a new wine skin noah bring a new vessel build of gopher wood it is you that will build it but you are going to build it according to my dimension, according to my instruction, according to what I say. Listen, the time we live in now is not a time for you to do things your own way. It's not a time to obey God's instruction and carry it out your own way. The Bible tells us that no scripture is of any private interpretation. But holy men of God, they spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God. It is got to be according to God's specification. What can we learn from that? Go for wood, something new. It's a new wine skin. It's a new vessel because God is about to pour new wine. Right? Now, let's keep reading. So we, what it meant was that he was going to go and look for go for wood. Something completely new not something that had been used before. Not a reused or reusable 
wine skin. So, it's got to be God's instruction, specification. Now, it now says make rooms in the ark. Why <laughs> was it to make room in the ark? <laughs> Let's read on. It now says cover it inside out with peach. Can I say this? If you join us on Sunday, we will go in depth on how a wine skin is made. And you will see the application, the similarity between Noah's ark and a new wine skin. Right? A new wine skins are made from goat skins. When they are being made, when the goat dies, we said goat is symbolic of the old nature, the stubborn nature, that evil, corrupt nature. The thoughts, the evil things we do, it's symbolic of a goat. So the goat must die to get a new wine, to get a new skin, goat skin. So something in us must die. You can't continue to recycle your behavior, recycle your anger, recycle bitterness, recycle unforgiveness. No, I will forgive now for a season. And then when they annoy me again, I bring it out again. No, you've got to. And listen, go for something completely new. You've got to do something. You've got to receive a new nature. When the goat skin is, you know, taken from goat dyes, skinned, when they're making the wine skin, they use peach. The same thing measured here, mentioned here to line to paint the inside of the goat skin do you know what that does to make it watertight to make it impervious to liquid so that liquid will not penetrate it it makes it watertight waterproof so it says cover it inside out with peach same thing when they're making goat skins which is a new wine skin and this is how you shall make it god gave the length right in today's measurement because we need to understand some things now in today's measurement the height the length and the width it says 300 cubits 50 the length is 300 cubits the width is 50 cubits and the height is 30 cubits in today's measurement that's 75 meters wide sorry 75 feet wide 450 feet long and 45 feet high now in meters 22 meters wide 400 and that's three and 300 meters 300 sorry 137 meters long one three seven meters long and 13 meters high and it had three decks the lower the middle and the higher deck so imagine a three-story building but this was actually higher than a three-story building just imagine how high this arc was how long it was so if you have a tape after this study go and measure it go outside and measure it <laughs> and see the dimension of the ark. So it was going to be according to God's specification. So God gave him all the specification and he says you build the ark. What is it we want to take home and learn today? You can be different. You can be that Noah. What did Noah do? He began to look for something new. The kind of wood that had never been mentioned in the Bible or prior to now and was not even mentioned thereafter. Gopher wood started looking for new wood to build an ark, a new vessel, something that's never happened before. And the making of the ark, do you know how long it took? According to Bible history, that dimension of ark took Noah 75 years to build. 
75 years it took him to build that ark now as we close picture what was happening when Noah was building the ark people saw him doing something different something new and they will be asking Noah what are you doing I'm building an ark what's an ark I'm building a vessel are you mad and what sort of wood is this you're doing using where did you get this where on earth did you unearth this from you can your guess is as good as mine he must have been mocked he must have been called crazy he must have been called weird he must have been called a wacko you know think about all the sort of derogatory names they will be calling Noah you have lost the plot you are doing something that's never existed before come on join us Noah we are all rocking we're all having a swell time here not Noah he chose to be different but look at the tenacity 75 good years it took him to build that ark and for those 75 years think about what he endured the mockery the name calling you know and everything and I can imagine today's terminology by the time he was building maybe the first one year Noah you're still here still building this and you're talking about some rain that's never existed before you must be mad they saw him in the second year third year fourth year they thought well in the fifth year maybe we'll give up okay maybe seven years his mental health will have kicked in and um, you know we needed we will have needed to take him to a psychiatric home seven five years he kept on building and kept telling people I'm building an ark because God said he will destroy the ark can you see how merciful God is can you see how God long suffered the Bible says God is long suffering can you see how patient God was and God through his grace still gave people time to repent that's the time we live in now you've got to be that Noah you're hearing this you stumbled on this broadcast is because God is long-suffering what does God want you and I to do to become that Noah to be different 75 years it took him to build that ark next week we will look at what happened because what happened was that he built the ark and after he finished building the ark God told him remember I told him to build it to a certain specification God told him he's going to send the flood but you know what I want you to do something bring animals every living thing male and female bring two of every sort bring them into the ark keep them alive with you make sure it's male and female God was specific birds male and female animals male female creeping things male female two of every kind and God said also take for yourself food and guess what God told him to bring himself his wife his three sons and their wives when you choose to be a Noah when you choose to be different when you dare to be different not only you get saved but your household those who are with you would you become that Noah today would you choose to be different in spite of the mockery and everything you can be that Noah because God is long-suffering we are in the last days and if you don't build yourself the ark now if you don't because God is so long suffering and that is why all these things are happening to give us and you and I every one of us the time to repent let's bow our heads let's talk to the Lord let's talk to the Lord God is not slack concerning his promises the Bible says the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night will you choose today to be different will you choose to have a new plan will you choose to confess will you choose to believe the Bible says with the heart man believes this simple word you've heard today is a gospel good news of salvation Jesus said like the days of Noah so will it be now and that's what we're witnessing 
but it's not all doom and gloom. You can build yourself that ark and get into that ark, but you need to do what God says. He says, whosoever shall confess the, Lord, the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Would you call on that name? He is Lord. He is the God of salvation. The Bible says grace and truth came through Jesus. All you need to say, do tonight is, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I call upon you. Save me from all my sins. Deliver me. Receive me. Get and change my whole heart. choose to be different. I choose to believe. I choose to confess you, even when the whole world is rejecting me. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray tonight for everyone watching. I pray for that man, that woman. I pray for that boy, that girl. I pray for the simple understanding you have brought. And I pray that, Lord, light has come. Darkness cannot stand. And you will save every household listening to this. You will save that person who decides Change starts with me. I dare to be different. And I begin to do something new. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for building your church. Thank you for build, bringing this word of salvation to every heart and every home. And Lord, do that which only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.